Here's a plot. I grabbed it off of uh, Wikipedia, and it's for the substance nitrogen. Okay, so it's looking at a temperature entropy diagram for nitrogen. Look at the values of the entropy. They don't make much sense, 3, 4, 5, 6. Physically, I don't relate to those, okay? But look at the values of temperature, 100 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin. I can relate to those. This is around atmospheric temperature, 300 Kelvin. This is super cold, 100 Kelvin, cryogenic, cryogenic temperatures, okay? Okay. Now, they show a red line right in here. What does that look like? Can you interpret that red line? The dome. Underneath that, what do we have? Two-phase mixtures. So at the top of the dome, what do we have? Critical point. So nitrogen does have a critical point, and it's about this temperature, and that's the entropy for the critical point. So you can look it up and compare. So this sequence of states going off to the left of the critical point is all saturated liquid. I'm sorry, saturated vapor. And this is all saturated liquid. True? Okay. What do we call this region above the critical point? Supercritical. The substance nitrogen is a supercritical region. Now, what do we call when it's over in this region? It's like an ideal gas. Nitrogen almost always behaves as an ideal gas. So way up in here, it behaves like an ideal gas. Okay, now let's do this. Let's do this. Find, a, if somebody says, I want you to show me on a temperature entropy diagram a line of constant entropy and then a line of constant temperature, that's really easy, true? A line of constant entropy would be something like, here's all the values of 6, 6 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, a line of constant entropy. Here's a line of constant temperature at 200 Kelvin. It's all just horizontal. Those are easy. But they also plot lines of constant temperature, I mean pressure. Can you see the lines of constant pressure? So up here they put the pressure labels. One bar, two bar, five bar, all. And so let's follow this black line down. This line right here is one bar. It comes down, 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 and then it goes into the two-phase region all the way across. Boom, there you go. One bar is around 1 atm. If I have liquid nitrogen and it's in a container and I have it open to the atmosphere, what will the equilibrium temperature of that nitrogen be in that container, that liquid nitrogen? around 77 Kelvin. It would be very, very cold. And that's what they're showing right around here. It's around 77 Kelvin. That's the boiling point of nitrogen, cryogenic. Now, what about this pressure right here? This is 200. Can you trace this line of 200? 200, that's a high pressure, and it goes down like that. True? Okay, so we're, we're getting acquainted with lines of constant pressure on this TS diagram. Where are lines of constant enthalpy, constant H? There are the blue lines. You have to look really closely. Let me erase some of this down in here. But what do they give us for the units on this blue right here? That's 50 kilojoules per kilogram. And then 100, then 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. Here's one at 430. So if we trace the line of constant enthalpy at 430, it looks like this. And that's a line of constant enthalpy where the enthalpy value is 430. Let's trace a line of constant enthalpy of 150. It's right here. It goes up and down. So those are the lines of constant enthalpy, okay? Now, where in this whole plot is the enthalpy a function of temperature only? Far to the right. That's exactly right. And so what happens is, is you see that this line of constant enthalpy of 350 is flat. And then it starts to move. But out here where it's flat, 
What does a line at constant temperature look like? Flat. So anywhere along this line, even though entropy is changing, even though pressure is changing, the value of temperature is the same and the value of enthalpy is the same. But if I boost the temperature, if I go from 200 to 250, now the enthalpy is different. But, but, there, but this is the region where enthalpy is only a function of temperature. In what region is enthalpy a function of temperature and pressure? Everywhere else. Everywhere else. So basically in this whole region, it's a function of temperature and pressure. Now down in this region, somebody says enthalpy is changing, but the pressure is constant. Well, that's because temperature and pressure are not independent in the dome, are they? They're not independent. So you would have to think of maybe in the dome, uh, the enthalpy is a function of temperature and quality, or pressure and quality. All right. Now let's consider throttling process, where you're going from, let's say, 200 bar to 100, or 1 bar. That's a throttling process, going from high pressure, low pressure. Let's start with the state A. So it's at 200 bar. And it's around 300 Kelvin, true? You then put it through a throttling device, and it drops the pressure to one bar. It's flowing through that throttling device. What is the temperature that it comes out of that throttling device? Well, it comes out at this state, B. And so we can read off the temperature at B. It looks like it comes out around 270. So through that throttling device with the nitrogen, it's a real gas. It's up in that supercritical region. It always stays a gas. It's not an ideal gas, although state B is very, very close to being an ideal gas. But state A definitely is not. And you see that the temperature dropped. So the Joule-Thompson coefficient along that path almost anywhere along that path. It was a stronger positive, not so strong a positive value. But then finally, the Joule-Thompson coefficient out in here goes to zero. All right, let's consider a point C. What's the pressure at C? 200. Same pressure as A. But what's the temperature at C? Uh, wow, that's really cold. It's That's one... 130 something, 133 Kelvin or something like that, true, at point C. If you let it reduce the pressure to one bar, isenthalpic process, where is the outlet of that throttling device? Point D, true? So the 150 is a line of constant enthalpy, true? It stayed on that line. So it came out at 77 Kelvin. It came out in the two-phase region. Visually, can you interpret or visually estimate the quality X at state D? What is visually your estimate of X of D? 60%? OK. Anybody else have a different value? How about if D was way over here? What would be the, the quality of, at this point? About 5%, 0.05. What happens if it's right here? About 95%. And so if it's right there, it looks like it's around uh, 60%, right? 60%. Meaning, how much of it is in the liquid state? How much of it's in the vapor state? If it's 60% quality, 40% is liquid and... 60% by mass or by volume? By mass, by mass, okay? By mass is in the 40% still ready to boil. So it's in liquid state. Uh, can you tell that the Joule-Thompson coefficient is not, it's, it's not as large there, 
but it's very steep right here. So right in this region, you have a very large Joule-Thompson coefficient, a large positive Joule-Thompson coefficient. And then it's still pretty strong there, but not as strong. Where could we get the case where we go through a throttling device and the temperature of nitrogen goes up? Keep going to the left. Keep going to the left. So let's say we want to start at a pressure of 1,000, true, and we'll start at uh, 250. So this looks like the intersection of 250 with the 1,000, right? Maybe I should have picked that one right there, a little over 1,000, okay? And then if you drop the pressure, it's going to stay on a line of constant enthalpy, and anywhere starting here and maybe ending here, what's the temperature do? It goes up. So we have a negative Joule-Thompson coefficient in that region. Okay. Um, you can see the sequence of points to the left is one behavior of the nitrogen, and to the right is the other behavior of the nitrogen, right? 